And as soon as I start seeing my friends on Zoom <laughs> or whatever video we're using, FaceTime, all sorts of things we've been doing, that it really helps me to make a connection. And so I, I, I'm reminded how adaptable our brains are, how adaptable we are as humans. And it's amazing. Like I certainly wouldn't have chosen to do this Zoom. I, I don't really, I wasn't doing FaceTime before this. I wasn't really someone who used that in their lives. Um, I'm not sure why, but I didn't. And now I think that I will because I can see how wonderful this can be to see each other and to have conversation and to see each other's eyes and laugh together. So I really appreciate it. And um, I feel almost as if we're together. And the one thing I'm really, really missing is that touch, being here in my own home with my husband in LA. Uh, I just, you know, I can really relate to people who don't get a lot of touch in their lives. And uh, I'm, I'm really missing it. And I even had this moment yesterday when I was hiking that I was missing the touch because I saw a couple holding hands. And I thought, well, the air is touching me. Right? And I've said this before that there really is no separation between us. It's like where I am and where you are, there is the air between us that is touching us and we are connected and we breathe that air and we, we are connected in so many ways that we can't quite see, but there really is no separation. And yet we're unique beings and that's the beauty of yoga is that it can be both and, it doesn't have to be either or. So we are connected. You might hear geese and other birds around here as I'm speaking to you. Bring your hands together in front of the heart and then move them apart about an inch or two. So it's almost the Anjali Mudra, but your hands are not quite together yet. And move them apart slightly as if you're almost stretching taffy between your hands. So you, you kind of can feel that there's a connection between your hands, even though they're not touching right now. And as you're exploring this, allow your breath to be natural and present as it is. And when your hands do move to about maybe shoulder distance or chest distance apart, just hold them there. The hands, the palms facing each other as if they're touching, but they're not. Notice the sensation of air on your skin. Perhaps move the hands just a minuscule amount toward each other in a way so it barely looks like you're moving, but you're moving your hands slightly through the air. And notice the air not only touching your hands, but all that air between your hands, that space. And as you move the hands away and closer, away and closer in these tiny pulses, you might start to sense and feel almost like the sensation of a ball between your hands or something more palpable than the space or than the air that you could actually, you could feel the pressure of this space between your hands. Now, some of you might just need to imagine that. Some of you will start to feel that pulse, that space between your hands and very gradually, as if you're trying to slightly compress the space, bringing the hands slowly, slowly, slowly toward each other, pulsing. So it's very minuscule movements, but as you go, sense and feel the space, 
And when your hands come to about maybe four inches apart, three inches, whatever, just hold them like that and still the hands. Notice the space between your hands, that space that you're holding with your hands. Imagine it as a ball shape and begin to shape the ball. Maybe you shaped a snowball in your life, or maybe you've held a ball and just moved it in this way that you could shape the ball, moving your hands so the right hand comes on top of the ball and the left hand under it, and then still holding that energetic ball, moving the hands to parallel again, and then holding the ball, bring your left hand on top and your right hand on the bottom. And again, you might just need to really imagine it or you might already be able to feel it. And then again, just keeps changing the hands. So the right hand goes on top and left on bottom. And then you bring them parallel again. And then you don't lose the ball. So if, you're, if your hands get too far away, the, the ball's just going to drop. And then make that ball more compact. So you're pressing slightly against that space until you feel the hands coming a little closer and the ball's getting more compact until it's maybe the size of a golf ball. Getting smaller and smaller, very compact. And then hold that smaller ball. Maybe it's like a, a super ball, you know, those really high bounce balls. It's smaller than a golf ball. Place that in your palms and then seal the edges of your palms around that center ball space. All right, so now bringing the hands together, sensing and feeling the energy in your hands now, the warmth possibly, the, mm, the sense of something between your hands, something that is connecting you to yourself and to all of us, that space between us, making it palpable. And I love when we hug and we compress that space between us, yeah? But right now, knowing that we are being touched by the air wherever we are, and the energy of that air, that space connects us to each other. If there is an intention, something meaningful that you'd like to carry with you in your practice today, maybe a, you know, a wish, a prayer, an intention for how you want to, you know, be today or be during this time, whatever it is, bring that into your heart. And from your heart through your hands and out through your fingers. So you kind of angle your fingers away from you and spread through your fingertips as if you wanted to transmit this intention not only to your own heart but to the heart of it all mm -hmm. continuing with a few more deep fulfilling breaths now deepening your breath Atta Yoga Anushasanam, now yoga is offered. From your heart, slowly move the hands apart again as if you're stretching that taffy, and then all the way out wide. And reach the arms up into the sky, open the arms wide. Bring the right hand down next to you and the left arm up. So I might look opposite of you. Sometimes the camera just gives us a, an odd view. I might, it might look like I'm not doing my right arm or I am, I don't know, but do, do what I, do what you interpret as my, my directions. <laughs> so the right arm down, the left arm up and over. And let's make some circles with this left arm. Big circles, that's it. Big, wide circles. 
Beautiful. The next time your arm comes down, bring it down in front and bow toward the right leg. Now, some of you can stay on your right hand. Some of you might bring yourself down to your right forearm. Either way, and then stretch the left arm up again. Yeah, so you're kind of leaning either on your right hand or your forearm. You could have a block under the forearm. And then rise up. Come all the way up and over to your other side. So first the left hand is supporting and the right arms up and over. Drop your left shoulder, don't let it hike up. Now start your circles, do whatever direction you did on the other side. Circle, 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 circle. And then bring your arm, that right arm, down in front. So you're twisting slightly toward the left knee. You're leaning in toward your left knee. Have a big breath there. Notice the space that the breath expands inside your body. Yes, and notice how the lungs push against your ribs. Now you can stay on your left hand or forearm and stretch that right arm up again. Notice the breath. Are you pushing too far to the edge of your pose that you cut off your breath? If so, back off. The breath knows where to go when we let it in. Inhale up. Both arms up. And slide the hands right into the heart space. Please change the cross of your legs or stretch out a leg if that's not comfortable to sit in the opposite cross. Bring your hands together again in front of the heart, remembering your intention, your wish, your, your focus for your practice. Sweep your arms out to sides and up, big inhale. Right hand down to the side again. Now, do you remember the direction you were moving your arms? See if you can do the opposite now. So for me, it's kind of like a backstroke and then around and, and back. What is it for you? Mm. One more big circle and again, fold in toward that right leg. So the left hand's in front and you fold in. Now, depending on which leg is in front, that will often make the opposite side tighter this time. So for me now, I can't quite come down on my right forearm with this leg crossed like I could with the other. So I'm just gonna stay on my right hand, but you might be able to go onto the forearm and then raise your left arm up again. Line up your ears with your shoulders so your chest is open to the front body. That's it, big breath. And then come on up. And over to the other side, left arm down, right arm up. Yeah, and just like I noticed before, I'm able to bow in a lot more with this leg cross on this side. Now do your opposite circle that you did last time. So for me, it's the back stroke feeling. For you, it might be the forward stroke, just whatever feels like it's the opposite movements. Mm -hmm. That's nice. If you have any shoulder kinks, just bend your elbow. Do what you need to do to avoid pain. We don't want to go into any pain. We want to be aware of it so that we can feel like, oh, okay, that didn't feel great. All right? And then next time you're around and down, fold forward towards your left knee. And bow. And breathe. Deep full inhale, long complete exhale, staying on the left hand or coming onto the forearm, raise your right arm up toward the sky and move your ears back in line with your shoulders so your chest is wide open. Big breath. That's it. And then come all the way up to your seated position. That's nice, good. All right, let's meet on the hands and knees. 
I'll meet you there. I'm just going to make sure that everyone else has their sound off. Excellent. Good. All right. So coming on to our hands and knees. You might like blocks when you practice. If you have them, put them out in front. You might like your blanket under your knees. You know the drill. Mm -hmm. All right. So once we're on hands and knees, let's set ourselves into tabletop. Yeah, so our hands are pressing very strongly on the earth when we're on the hands and knees. But can you just mm, maybe move your hips slightly back and just imagine that little tiny ball underneath your palms again. So maybe the center of your palm gets a little lift. That's a chakra point right there where energy moves in and out of our bodies, right in the center of the palm. So, and then it runs up through the carpal tunnel. So we don't, we don't want to flatten the wrist down. You want to have like a little softness in the, the heel of your hand there, the pad of your wrist. So can you put more pressure in your fingers to be able to lighten the wrists a bit? on the floor. Good. So keep trying that. And then on your inhale, arch. And exhale, round your back. Draw your waistline into the, to the core more, into the spine. Inhale. Strong finger press, but lightly pressing your wrists. Exhale, round. One more time. Inhale. And exhale, round. Good, now move your knees back more and crawl your hands a little more forward so that you can lift the wrist. So you might be able to see that I'm off my wrist now and I'm more on my knuckles and fingers. And then very, very lightly put your wrist pads down so you feel that there's still that lift coming up from the underside of your arms. And we're in this half dog or puppy dog, wag your tail a little bit. Keep that connection happening in your hands. So your pressure is more through the finger pads and less through the wrists. Sounds good. One more round of breath. Yeah. And then rise, tucking toes, I should have said first, strong arms, lift your hips to downward face up. Once we get up off the ground, the wrist pads will end up pressing a little more into the earth, but the more you can press your finger pads, press the forearms upward as if you're trying to lift your wrists. Uh -huh. And then bending your left knee, just go ahead and straighten the right leg more so you can get some nice length through that leg and then switch. So bending and extending through your legs here. Mm -hmm. Anytime you need to rest, just come down into your half dog or your child's pose. As you're bending and extending, you can drop a hip when you bend the knee, drop the hip when you bend the knee. So you're kind of wagging your tail as you bend. Getting more into the side of your hips and your side waist. Right, so you're kind of angling the hips. Good, and let's come all the way back down onto the hands and knees and sweep the arms up to the sky. Big breath. On your exhale, twist to your right with your palms open to the sky. Feel the air touching your skin. Inhale up to the center. Exhale to the left. Inhale to the center. Exhale, open arms to the right. That's it. And up to the center. And exhale, arms wide to the left. Coming back to the center. Bring your hands to your heart and twist to your right. Mm. Coming back to the center with hands at heart. Twist to the left. Back to the center. And plant your hands again. When you plant your hands, again, light in the wrist. Stronger pressure through the fingers and knuckles. Tuck the toes and rise up. Bring your big toes together. Strengthen your arms and take your shoulders up towards your hips. You're kind of retracting your arm bones there. That's it. Press up from the underside of your arms and soften behind your heart. Draw the waistline back. And from the pit of your belly, raise the right leg up. And let's just hold it there for two. 
One, and lower slowly. Left leg up. Hold it for two. One, and lower that foot slowly. Walk to the front of your mat. Come into the forward fold, Uttanasana. Now the feet are holding us steady on the earth and we wanna feel pressure through the center of the heel and then spreading through the big toe and little toe. Making lines from center of the heel to the big toe to the little toe. Nice, steady support. And as you press into the ball of the foot and your big toe, your arches will lift. Take any, any bend that you need so you can release your back and your head over. That's it. Bring the hands to the hips and with a big breath, rise up. Put the arms down by your side, release your breath and hands to the heart. Remembering your intention, holding that space in your heart. Feel the space that the breath moves into now. Where are you breathing to? As you notice the space you are breathing to, maybe you can expand that space just a little more. And as you exhale, release the hands by your side, sweep the arms up, big inhale, exhale forward, full bending those knees on the way down. Lift your heart halfway, look out, exhale, bow again, rise up all the way. Land hands and heart, beginning of the sun salute, opening up with a big breath. Exhale, fold into your legs, into the earth, maybe touch the earth, lengthen your spine forward, look out, exhale, bow again, and push down, rise up. Lift up through your arches, all the way up, and hands to the heart. One more round like that. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look out. Bow again, rise again, hands to heart, breathe in and out through your nose if possible. Notice the air as it touches the entry point at your nostrils and travels all the way to your lungs, to diaphragm, moving the breath in and out. Relax the arms by your side. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Interlace your fingers now. Standing strong in your legs, draw your core in, zipping up your center, arc over to your right. Yes, with a nice side body bend, you got it. Inhale up to the center and over to your left. All the way up through center. This time when you're over to the right again, now bow your left side a little bit more toward the earth. So you're kind of looking down, keep stretching through the fingertips, inhale up to the center, over to the left, and then you take a little bit of bow with the right side. You're wrapping the right side up and over, kind of looking toward the ground. And inhale up all the way to center. Release the arms by your side. Pause to feel. Notice the space where your breath moves into and increase that space with mindful breath. Hands to the heart. And continuing into our sun salutation, sweep the arms, exhale, bow forward, lift your heart part way, look out, and step the right foot back into a lunge, separating your feet hips width apart. You can be on fingertips or you can have blocks on either side of your foot and be up on blocks. 
Have one more breath. Lower the right knee and walk the left foot all the way to the side of the mat. Put your left hand on the inside of the left leg there. Push your arm and leg together. So I'm pushing my left arm into the leg and the leg is pressing that arm. Stay for another breath. Mm -hmm. And then walk your left foot all the way around and it's behind you on the mat. It's a straight long leg pressing into your left foot strongly. Press into your finger pads and knuckles. Breathe into the space inside of you. Yes, and now add the right leg for the plank. Now you could be back on the knees anytime you need to. Draw your tailbone away from your waist and lift the belly into the spine. Good, lengthen through your chest so you're looking a little more forward. And downward face dog. All the way upside down, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Step forward with your right foot and step forward with the left, leading at the front of the mat. Steady on your legs, rise up, inhale, big breath. Come back to your heart, hands to heart, and remember your intention for today. Breathe it in and release the hands, exhale, inhale, a big breath to the sky, exhale, forward fold into your legs, inhale, lengthen your spine, left foot back into the lunge, holding this lunge for a few breaths. When you put your left knee down, now move the right foot to the right edge of your mat, right hand comes inside the leg and you press the leg and the arm together. You feel that connection and there'll be an action inside your hip too. Look for that. Widening against the leg with your arm and hugging the arm with your leg. Mm. All right, right foot reaching back behind you now. Walk it back so the ball of the foot's on the floor. Press down with the ball of the foot, your finger pads, your knuckles. Staying here or adding the left leg for plank. Yes, so your legs lift your hips. Mm -hmm. Your low belly supports your spine and your chest can lengthen forward. Keep your breath going. And downward face dog again. Left foot forward between the hands and right foot meets the left at the front of the mat. Bow forward. Rise up, big steady breath. Reach your heart up for the sky. Hands land onto the heart. Sense and feel. Recall your intention. Release the arms, inhale the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, look out, halfway up. Right foot back, lunge. Now press down with that back foot like you were in a plank. Yeah, super strong back leg. Hands to the pelvis, hands to the hips, rise up. And the more you press down into the earth, the steadier you will get. Center of the left heel. Spread the weight to the ball of your foot, big toe, little toe. Space in the arches, lift through the pelvic floor and send the arms up. Notice how your breath moves in and out. Hands come down, move the left leg wide on your mat, left foot wide, hold it there, just like we did on the knee. Pressing the arm and leg together. Engaging the core from the pit of your belly, move your left foot to meet the right. You can be on the knees to do that or in the plank. Mm, downward face dog again. I know we're not in chaturanga time. Yeah, we're getting there. Right foot forward, left foot forward, bow forward, Uttanasana, and rise again, big breath. Hands to heart. Sense and feel. 
Release hands, release breath. Inhale the arms to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Lift your heart, look out. Left foot back. Standing on the ball of the back foot. Strong pressure in both legs, hands to hips to rise. Yes, the more you press down into the earth, the more you will stabilize yourself in this balance. Breathe well, then send the arms up once you're steady, once you're balanced. Steady as we go. Find pressure in the center of your right heel and spread it through your foot. Yes, lift through the arches. All the way up. Hands come down to the floor, widen your right foot out to the edge of the mat and pause. Hug the arm or the leg against your arm as you press out. Yeah. Strong back leg to plank. Oh, nice move. Downward face dog. Left foot forward and right foot forward. And we're in that forward fold again. Rise when you're ready. Hands to the heart. Repeating that one one more time, we'll add a uh, chaturanga vinyasa flow between uh, the lunges. Inhale, sweep arms. Exhale, forward fold. Lift your heart part way. Right foot back, steady for lunge. Hands to the hips as you rise. Push down to rise, yes. Find that balance. Send the arms up. Just a breath here. Hands come down, left foot meets right. You might be on the knees, lift your heart and lower down through your hips. That's nice, strong legs, lifted heart for cobra. Exhale, press back, child's pose or downward face dog. What is calling you right now? Three more breaths there now. If you're in downward dog, press up from the underside of your arm so that you can get more pressure in the finger pads and less in your wrists. Unshrug your shoulders. Yeah. Right foot forward, left foot forward and bow. Rise again. If you need to slow this down at all, do so. Hands to heart. Pause to feel again as our heart rates come up a little more. You might feel that. Inhale, sweep your arms. Exhale, fold again. Lift your heart part way. Left foot back. Holding that lunge, hands to the hips. Steady pressure in your right heel, spreading through the ball of the foot. Send arms up when you feel steady. Steady as you go. On the way down, hold the leg power steady. Hands come down. You walk your right foot around and back up into the ball of the foot. Pitch your weight forward, lower through Chaturanga. Curl to Cobra or Upward Dog. And back to downward dog, Adamuka or child's pose, Balasana. Two more breaths. And if you're in child, you might rise again to meet the dog, left foot forward and right foot forward, bow forward. Rise again. And hands land in your heart. Bow your head toward your heart so that you can just release your neck, shrug your shoulders up and down a couple times. Good. 
Now move your shoulder heads to the back body, shoulder blades on your back. This is the sensation we need when we go through a chaturanga. <clears throat> Put your hands like you would for chaturanga, like your palms are on the air in front of you. Yeah, and your elbows are in line with your chest. And then your wrists might even come into line with your elbows. Notice if your shoulders are falling forward like so and move them to your back and squeeze those shoulder blades together a little bit. You want to do that when you're doing your reverse push-up, when you're lowering. Yeah, you want to hug the shoulder blades onto your back. Keep the head of the arm bone back. Yeah. So sense and feel that position. Keep that as you sit down for chair. Sitting back with your hips, you want to still feel the pressure evenly through the heel of the foot, spreading through the toes. Now take the arms up. Palms can face each other. Stay with this chair position. Awkward pose, also called power pose. Pressing the thighs down, hollow out your belly, lift your heart, and deep forward fold again. Lifted heart, look out. Right foot back, turn into the warrior two now with back heel down, line up heel to heel, press into your heels, spread through the toes and windmill your arms to come up, warrior two. So there's a little twist to come into this pose, but if you move the hips more in the open position toward the, the long side of your mat, mm -hmm, then there'll be a little less twist. Arms steady, floating over earth for three. Maybe sit a little deeper for two. And one more deep fulfilling breath here for one. Windmill your arms and you can choose onto the knees or like a plank. Now heads of the arm bones back, squeezing shoulder blades for chaturanga. Strong legs for cobra or upward dog. And we're back in the child or the downward case dog. Breath will bring buoyancy to your chest. If you're in the downward face dog, breathe so big that your chest floats a bit. And then ungrip your shoulders and your neck. And relax a little more behind your heart. Keep that breath flowing. Now, if you're in child, rise. Right foot forward and hold that position now. Some of you want blocks here because we want to straighten this front leg. Straighten it out and really lengthen through that leg. Look underneath you, curling your head to your heart and see that your hips are level. And if your left heel is very high up, you might stretch it down. If it's down, you might move your foot back a little so you get a little more stretch through the heel. Coming to the front of the mat, option one, step forward. Option two, before you step, float your left leg up. So it's like you're suspended before you step down, floating the left leg up. Maybe you can bring your hands to your heart for a moment. And then step both feet to the front. Rise again. Hands come to your heart, pause. Sweep your arms. Keep the arms up, sit back in your chair. Maybe a little lower chair, maybe you can go half chair, sit all the way back. Bow forward, straightening the legs a bit, lift your heart, left foot back. This time it's warrior two, I'll be showing the back of the pose. Left heel down, heel to heel, heel pressure, spreading through the feet, and then windmill your arms, left arm up and over. So you might notice there's a little twist in your midsection. Turn your hips, so they face more the long side of the mat. Mm. And then there'll be a little less twist in the chest. 
Yeah, so in this left waistline, you don't want to feel very twisty or pinchy. Float the arms over the earth, maybe sitting a little deeper for three. And two, lift through the pelvic floor, lift through your arches. Float the arms on the air. And windmill the arms all the way up and over. You know what to do. You can walk onto the knees, right to plank. Lengthen forward, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. And exhale back into downward face or again, find child's pose. If you're in downward dog, press back with your thighs, scoop your tail, lift your belly and soften behind the heart. Press up with your arms and firm the shoulder blades on your back. Fill the space inside your chest with breath. If you're down on the ground, rise again. Left foot forward between the hands, straight leg lunge. Mm. Feel the left heel. Are you really in the center of the left heel? You might have to bend your knee a bit to really redistribute that weight. Yeah. And so there should be space underneath your left arch. Lift that into your pelvic core and maybe descend through the right heel for more stretch or move the foot back if you're not getting much action in the back leg. Stay for another breath or two as the left leg lengthens and widens out. Two choices to step forward, simply step or maybe float the right leg up a moment. Breathe well. One hand or both hands to your heart. And step to the front, everybody bow forward. Stay low. Move the right leg behind your left and then off to the left side. So you're pretty well crossed behind. Your right foot might even be off your mat. Lean towards your, your right foot, the one way out there on the left. I know it's a little confusing, isn't it? Ooh. How's that outer left hip getting some action? And then replace the right foot where it should go. And let's take the left behind the right and then all the way out to the side. Very fine, back to neutral. Okay, let's stay low. Inhale, look out. Bend the knees like chair and right foot back. Let's put that knee down now and sweep the arms up, low lunge. So you might be in more of a right angle with your left foot, or you might move the right knee back a little more, and then the left knee can drift a little forward and you descend through your hips, your choice. Lift the belly off your thigh, take the arms up. Hands to the heart, remember your intention, your prayer. And as you curl your head towards your heart, twist to the left, right elbow comes onto the knee. Now you could stay there or lift the right knee for an added challenge. Squeeze the hips together and breathe into the space inside your heart to turn the chest just a little more. Mm -hmm. Stay off the knee if you're off it or lift the knee if you like. And let's bring the hands down, straighten the front leg again. Hmm. One more time, step up, this time the right leg float. Yes, now take the left arm and wrap it behind your left leg. So you're just holding on the floor with your right hand. Maybe you need both hands, it's a choice. Breathe well. Maybe you can see your right leg floating up high. And step to the front. Left foot back, left knee on the earth. And once you're steady, arms up, inhale. So you could keep your hips upright more or you could sink in a little more, depending on what stretch you're looking for there. Hands come to heart, remember your prayer. 
Big breath, curl your head towards your heart as you twist. So the back of the neck feels long. Look at your right hip, is it moving out to the right? Hug it into the center. Yeah, you can stay on your knee or for added challenge, lift off the left knee. I know, some people might fall when that happens. It's okay, practice. Keep your breath flowing. Lots of breath here. When you bring your hands down to the ground, straighten your right leg. Getting even longer. And one more time, step up onto the right leg, left leg to the sky. Option, wrap the right arm behind your leg and hold on. Mm. Everyone's breathing. Maybe you can look back and see that left leg rising up. Wow. And step to the front, bow. Rise again. And pause, hands at the heart. Gather your breath. We are connected through space and time, through this breath. Notice the air currents as they caress your skin. Notice your heartbeat. Breathe to help your heart come to calm, even pace. Very fine, release the hands down by your sides, mountain position, Tadasana, palms open toward the front body. Stand evenly on your two feet. Center the heel spreading through the ball of the foot and the little toe. Thank you. Reach the arms to the sky and sweep them behind you now. Hands behind your back. A few choices here. You can interlace the fingers like so. You could hold a strap if you've got one, or you could just hold your waistband to give you something to pull on and then squeeze the shoulder blades together. So whatever grip you have, mm -hmm. maybe walk your fingers closer together. Lean your head to the left and your arms to the right. And other side, lean your head to the right and arms to the left. And when you're back in center, yes, there. Now sit down in chair and stretch the arms back. This is a great preparation for bridge pose, the back bends. Release your arms and sit down. You could come through a squat, you could go on your knees, whatever works for you. Uh, if you have a block, you might want it handy. You don't have to, but it's nice. Or maybe a pillow even that would lift your hips for you. Thick pillow, maybe a doubled up pillow, uh, something like that, all right? Even like a thick blanket would work, okay. And then you roll down onto your back. Yeah. Bring your arms down by your sides for bridge. Feet are parallel, press through the heel, spread through the ball of the foot and the little toe. So the arches are lifted, there's space there. And into that space, energy lifts up into your body. Arms by the side. Bring the shoulder blades together onto your back so your chest is lifted a little more. Look straight up at the ceiling or the sky, pressing into the back of your head. Lift your hips now, press into your feet, scoop the shoulder blades under you and possibly interlace. You may or may not. It doesn't matter if you do or don't, but if you do, then walk your fingertips onto your uh, hands more and press down through your arms. 
Uh huh. Press down through the back of the head and your feet and lift your hips. Stay here in this breath. Press your arms into the earth like you are trying to move them away from your hips. Lift the chin away from your chest so you're looking straight up and your throat is open. Breathe into the space inside you. Soften your belly. Now, you might slip that block right under your pelvis. You might just hold the pose. You might lower down and rest. If you're on the block, then you can take the arms just by your sides, position your feet parallel, knees parallel. If you're still holding the working pose, please come down and rest for a few breaths. You can just rest with your knees bent and your hips on the ground. If you're up on the block, do not move your head. If you're on the block and you'd like to take one leg up or you're on the floor and you want to take one leg up, right knee into your chest or you're in the working pose. Some of you might be in the working pose and stretch your right leg up. Just look straight up, holding that leg out for three or two. And one, release right leg down, bring left knee to chest and then stretch it up. And lower the left knee to your heart and foot to the ground. Gently lift your hips off the block, move that block, and very slowly roll down through the spine till your hips come down. Once your hips are down, create the little arch in your back and just feel here. Hmm. Separate your feet as wide as the mats and move through a few windshield wipers. You could stretch your arms wide here. This time goes so fast, especially when we're not together in the room and I'm just kind of going into my flow. <laughs> so we're winding down now. Mm -hmm. Leave the knees to the right. Pick up your right ankle and put it to the outer left knee close to your, or on the thigh close to your knee. Just let that thigh and, and hip drop. Change it out. Feet wide, knees wide, knees to the left. Left ankle comes onto right thigh close to the knee. And if there's any pain, just release the foot down. You don't want to hurt your knee in any way. Big breath. Release the foot down. Feet onto the floor, knees up, and hug the knees up into your chest. Pressing the knees gently into your hands as you hug in. Maybe rock side to side. Maybe give the knees a little circle around to massage your back. And how about going in the other direction? And holding the knees close to your heart now, do a little sit up, draw the low belly in, lift your head toward your knees. Mm, now if this hurt, hurts your neck in any way, hold the back of your head. If you can keep your head up without holding, that's fine too. And everyone hold the right knee and extend the left leg over the earth. Lifting up a little higher, maybe change the legs, left leg in, right leg out. Again, hold your head with a hand if it hurts your neck. Change it out and do one more round on your own. Notice your core connections and lay your head back. Happy baby pose now. Last little thing here before we rest for a few moments in our Shavasana.
Now, if you think you might like a very long Shavasana, you want a longer Shavasana today, you might just turn off the feed now and take your own timing and get up when you feel like it, maybe after five or 10 minutes. This Shavasana will be about maybe four minutes or so. And then bring your feet down onto the floor. And if there's any other pose that would make you feel complete with your practice, you can do what you need to. And when you're ready, just stretch your legs down and we'll all come into a Shavasana now for a few minutes. And you'll hear the sound of the bell. It'll be time to come out of it slowly. Mm. As you lie back, earth holds you, holds us all. Soften your hands so your fingers curl toward the palm. Soften your face and your jaw and your lips, your eyes. Very slowly. Again, feel free to stay in Shavasana as long as you like. If you'd like to end now, just take yourself up slowly, moving yourself into a comfortable seated position. No hurry. Coming up slowly helps us to keep the settled sense of, of, of the energy down, we're settled, we're still settled in Shavasana, slowly, slowly meeting the hands at the heart. As your hands come together, sense the space in the center of the palm, there is always that space available. The space between us is what connects us. The space between the lungs is where the heart is. And every time we breathe, we massage our hearts. Breathe in deep and notice the massage of the heart. The heart responds and it calms down every time the lungs breathe deeply and massage that heart. Do it again. It's the inner hug. Hmm? I'm so grateful to all of you for practicing here today. 
You can find me on Facebook on Monday and Friday at 1230. It's a free practice. It's a, it's a public post, so anyone can find it if you're on Facebook. So there is space between us, but it also connects us. And I do feel you all here. Thank you so much for sharing practice with me, bowing head to heart to our intentions. We bow to each other, the one and ourselves. <laughs> 